Hi there! Hope everything is okay on your end, wherever you are. Uh, this uh, evening, I'm continuing with the Luxury Life with Ghalia editions and I'm going to meet uh, Naila uh, to discover with her her story about uh, her career, her career choices and why she decided to work uh, in luxury. So we're going to be looking at uh, those aspects with her. And I wanted to highlight in this life the importance uh, of this aspect in luxury retailing because most of us have the tendency to think that luxury is only about global brands that open up in major cities or major capitals in malls and that um, are known or renowned. So uh, in, in these uh, Luxury with Ghalia Live editions, I would like also to highlight on uh, the fact that luxury uh, brands could be smaller in scale, yet present customers with a selection of products that are crafted and unique um, even I would like to emphasize on the idea that uh, smaller brands or smaller designers could cater for greater audiences uh, and still present them with uh, customized and personalized products because they focus on uh, the quality of the work, the qualities uh, related to design, research, etc. So, um, I think this is the main uh, idea behind this live today. I'm going to be joining Neira in to kick off with the live. She's joining from Cyprus. Uh, Naila, I don't know if it's on the portfolio or the personal. I'm going to wait just one little minute to get hold of Naila. And just to um, remind you that all of the um, Live with Ghalia, whether luxury or uh, retail focused editions are uh, uploaded on IGTV and on YouTube. So if you didn't have the chance to watch um, the lives uh, on the date, uh, you could always uh, go to YouTube uh, or IGTV and access them. Um, okay, Naila, <laughs> I'm going to send in the invite on the portfolio account. Hi, hey. Naila. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I, I think you were connected on the other account. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, how are things back oh, in Cyprus? Great. It's great to have a conversation with you. I, the last time we had a conversation, I think, was in class. Like, uh, yeah, like five, 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it was back in 2014, 2015, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were younger. These, were, these are times when we were younger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's Naila, nice I'm so that. happy to be having this conversation this evening, tonight. Uh, I was doing a little introduction uh, about the, the context of this conversation, uh, and I wanted to highlight the importance of uh, this conversation because I want to put forward with you, through your story and experiences, the importance of working in luxury, even if we are still on a smaller scale. Uh, so let's go back to basics, go back to NDU, I mean 2014 <laughs> or something, uh, when you were still interested in studying uh, fashion design or design maybe in general, and how uh, life uh, took you to, to where we, you are today. <laughs> yeah, so my journey began by um, 
starting to study fashion design in MDU. Ralia was one of my instructors in uh, fashion marketing. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is where I discovered my love for not fashion, but the idea of translating visions or uh, ideas into objects, into real objects. So I started loving this concept, like translating thoughts into real things you can touch. So um, because of this, I, I fell in love with the design world and I, uh, I saw myself attracted more into smaller scale objects like fashion items were so big for me in terms of uh, size, if you want, because I was so much detail oriented yeah. and uh, garments are fascinating for me. I loved every minute of my journey into fashion, but I found that I'm more attracted into like more details, uh, smaller objects, very intricate, uh, meticulous uh, ways of uh, manufacturing objects. So uh, after my uh, fashion journey, I decided to continue to the design world, but to go into jewelry because uh, jewelry was uh, another world for me that was completely still unknown and uh, which attracted me a lot. And I thought that, okay, I love, I love design. I love translating those thoughts into objects and I love very precious little details. And yeah, so jewelry is the thing for me. I uh, took uh, some evening uh, courses, uh, short uh, intensive course of jewelry to see if this is the thing I love. And I found that I really have a lot of passion and love for it. And I went, went ahead and uh, started researching for master's degrees in uh, jewelry. And uh, while I was doing this, I was um, hearing a lot of people around me saying that the luxury world, like you said, like the idea in people's head, like luxury, jewelry, fashion, high brands are very inac inaccessible for normal people. Like if they say, because those words are very family oriented businesses. And if your family doesn't have a factory or a brand or someone related to you, then it's difficult to make it on your own in this world. And it's, it's saturated. So, right. yeah, it, take, it took courage to throw myself into this world where I'm not related, like no one from my family has to do with design. So, and I went to Roma to uh, the European Institute of Design. And this is where I, uh, I studied my master's. And this is where I realized that this vision of um, luxury we have in my country, like in Lebanon, was so distorted because there I had people in my class, like above 30 years old that left their careers to follow their passion and go into luxury. And it taught me that really there is no age to make it into this world or to change your whole career and follow this path that you want. Because some people in my master's degree had really not related fields like a, a, physicist, a physicist, physics, a physicist, physician. Yeah. A physicist. Yeah. And, physics uh, major. Yeah, yeah and uh, business majors and uh, film and they all loved had this passion and love for jewelry they decided to abandon their amazing careers around Can the world and go study jewelry and go into this luxury world so it opened my eyes to this idea that there's no age to make mm -hmm. it in this in this field and uh, mm -hmm. that where I grew up, the, I was really uh, influenced by the society around me that 
at a certain age, you should be in a successful uh, company with a successful uh, job. And uh, this gave me hope, seeing all these people around me sharing this love. I hope your life. teacher, I hope your teachers didn't influence you as well <laughs> on taking like <laughs> a major job at a certain age. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, it was um, um, very eye-opening for me. And Naila, the choice, the choice of going and studying in Rome, was it also uh, a decision related to maybe um, the cultural aspect, uh, the European uh, point of view uh, of how luxury would be portrayed and taught and passed on to you as a student? Yeah, yeah, this, of course. Actually, I was researching many institutes in, in Europe because... Um, yeah, th there is many styles in jewelry, especially, and the European is the, um, the source, the basic, and this is where you are in contact with the jewelry, like you don't only see it in books, you can go and see it as real objects in museums from the history of jewelry, from the Etruscan jewels and the Egyptian, and you can really see it with your eyes, and it's really different different than seeing it in textbooks. And um, yeah. while I was studying fashion design in NDU, I was taking Italian classes and not related, like I never knew that I was gonna end up in Italy, but I thought, okay, I'm studying fashion. I love languages, let's study Italian, might be useful in this field. So, and I was researching and I, I found this amazing university, Yad. I, I, like if someone is uh, searching to go somewhere, talk to me, I will advise you to go to Iyad. Um, and it was like it's meant to be. I studied the language, I'm ready to be there. I found the amazing program, amazing teachers. So this is what influenced my choice. And it was an amazing mm -hmm. choice I made. And really in classes there, we started to learn and then we go to the museum to look at what we learned and it really is life-changing and it changes my perspective to education even to majoring in something because it should be practical this field like everything artistic should be practical should be should be in contact with with what you are learning because it's not theories mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like actual yeah so, uh, so in in that perspective, uh, during your master's degree, uh, not only you specialized in the design aspect of jewelry, you also um, were able to practice it, and uh, maybe to practice a certain direction or style of working uh, jewelry, right? Yes. Yeah, so the program I chose um, focuses on. Uh, design, manufacturing, and the business side also of, of uh, jewelry, mm -hmm. so the marketing, the um, window displays, packaging, and all this kind of study. Um, mm -hmm. other so than not design, only designing for designing, but designing and putting uh, on the market as well the product. Yeah, and even the difference between like being a designer or being an artist, designing for a company or designing for your own uh, your mm. own brand or being limited by other yeah, sometimes you have to design something you don't like personally because you're, this is your job as a designer to design following cer certain guidelines for people that ask you to design and mm. this is what I'm doing sort of now because I I like I market myself as Naila obeyed the designer who offers services of design or Naila obeyed the brand who caters objects that are my designs. So it, there is this nuance or this uh, like difference between being restricted into certain guidelines to design for customers or being free, mm -hmm. designing what you want and catering for your own audience that will be attracted to what you think 
is uh, what you want Naila, to Naila, let's talk about uh, those two different aspects but briefly about the design services and we'll go more thoroughly into discussing the development of your own brand. Uh, however, in terms of design services in the Middle East, uh, do you think, or in the Gulf region, uh, are there today customers who are willing to buy your services and who value uh, design services in accessory and jewelry? Yeah, actually, I was um, surprised at the amount of brands that prefer to work with freelancers instead of employees in the in the design, like uh, design uh, jewelry design companies, big brands that prefer to work with freelancers around the world to have different perspectives on on brand instead of as employees. So yeah, in the Gulf area, um, I've worked with a company um, in Dubai, with a company in India. So they, yeah, they work with me as a, as a freelancer to cater designs for them. And this is, I think it's the vision of most companies in development. This is what I'm seeing the most, like they look for independence. People like me who offer services of designing instead of employees that are uh, constantly- Full-timers and working constantly the, yeah right um however today let's concentrate on the development of your brand and the idea or the story behind your brand okay so uh you took a, a, a clear concept and that you developed and then you started marketing uh, slowly uh, why did you have this idea and why you chose this concept of uh, minimalism and simplicity to work with uh, your jewelry brand. Uh, okay, so I will start by how I put myself out there. So it was COVID. I was just uh, graduated. And uh, this is the time where I had to launch myself in the working place. And this is the moment where the working place was uh, kaput. And uh, especially this luxury world, like uh, it was, it is not a necessity. It was uh, shut for a while before. And uh, especially companies, they were looking to fire people. So the idea of thinking to kickstart your career at that time was impossible. And it demotivated me in a certain way because I thought, okay, well, now it's the time, like this is the time where I should start my career and be there in the workplace. And this is, yeah. it's impossible, it's limiting me. So I was demotivated for a while. And then I thought of finding an alternative to uh, do something. So it started by really something very simple that I decided to show the world that I studied design, I'm a designer, um, look at what I can do. <laughs> so I opened this uh, Instagram page that is called Portfolio because it's really my portfolio. I wanted to use it to uh, show companies at first. Uh, to try to apply to companies and link this profile so they can see my work. But because of this, it, uh, I started being more motivated to uh, fill this portfolio with new projects so the people can have a wider idea of what I can offer. And because of this, like I never thought social media would take me into the workplace, but you see now this technology, how it influences everything. So I started to get those opportunities of um, working as a freelancer because of an Instagram account. And uh, mm. so I started uh, working with uh, like, a, someone asks me to make a gouache rendering of a jewel. I make it, I send it. Uh, other companies um, reached out to work more constantly as a like constant designer for them 
So I started to see like, okay, Instagram has power to um, make me start a career as an independent without, uh, even in this pandemic time. And uh, so I started right. uh, giving uh, jewelry illustration classes because of yeah, people that find me on Instagram. And uh, because of this, like one person leads to another person, it's a whole chain. And at the end, you find yourself like, okay, uh, this maybe can work. Even in during these times, someone can still uh, notice you and uh, someone can mm. still need your services. And mm. um, so this is where I developed my services as uh, teaching, illustration, uh, designing, 3D modeling, etc. At the same time, um, I wanted, I always wanted to have my brand and uh, to design my own pieces. But as someone uh, who wants to start alone, you need a capital and in jewelry, it's not peanuts. Like you need, it's not easy. you need some money. <laughs> yeah. You need some money to make it in jewelry. So, uh, yeah. So now for me, I think it's soon to launch my uh, my jewelry brand that I dream of. So I, I I was searching for for alternatives to still cater my products, but in another way before launching my brand. Mm. So. This is so, so why, this, this the idea of the little happy person. Yes, this is why I uh, did this collaboration. And the person Tell us behind about the this. brand I worked <laughs> with uh, is Noor Stefan. And uh, we, I've known her a long time ago. And because of Instagram, we reconnected again. And, I, uh, I think Noor is, is with us. I think she connected at the beginning, right? <laughs> Hi, Noor. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw you. <laughs> so, oh. so, so basically, if we can just recap things, uh, we're saying that in um, luxury and uh, in, in jewelry, let's say, it's not easy to start a brand, even though we have like the idea of the design, even though we have beautiful designs, we have to have a certain capital uh, to ensure at least uh, the, the first collection or the, 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 the upcoming collection, right? And this uh, matière première or like... Um, basic material that you need alone is a capital and we still didn't include the cost of working it etc right so exactly. here you started collaborating yeah you're working with precious uh, material in jewelry mostly it's not uh, yeah. always but mostly so i started doing actually uh, some ceramics jewelry you can that is uh, on my portfolio on my profile so you, you can check it but yeah, I wanted to work with metal, with precious material, and uh, I, so Noor reached out, let's do something together. I'm like, yes, let's do something together. And uh, yeah. so this idea of this little happy human, we call it, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's cute. <laughs> so we, so it was lockdown, it was uh, sad moments, sad timing in life. And I decided to create this little piece that uh, those earrings, they are called the happy earrings, with the hope that they bring happiness to people that wear them during these times and hope for better days. And uh, they are made of a little happy human. I, I'm wearing it here, so... <laughs> so I'm... I cannot yes. say his name without a smile. <laughs> <laughs> it's really yeah. happy and then you change the little uh, uh, diamond thingy right inside yeah so he's where he's um he's he has a balloon and this balloon yeah. you can fill with either your hoop uh some studs uh so the idea is to choose the color of your balloon the color of mm -hmm. the happy humans balloon you want so you can wear with a pearl as a white balloon you can wear with studs of colored gems 
or diamonds or hoops or you can even put it in a chain around your neck so mm -hmm. this happy human i um i never thought it would bring me this much happiness for me to but actually really when i wear it joy fills me and i hope everyone <laughs> who wears it feels this too <laughs> So let's let's talk a little bit of specifics. I know sometimes this is like a, a sensitive topic, but did you manage to start selling some happy humans or not yet? I mean, yeah. portraying uh, this product through your personal portfolio or through your collaboration, uh, how are people reacting to it? And vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, I mean, the quality of the product, knowing that it is a jewelry product, right? Yeah, yeah. This product is made of uh, 18 karat pure gold. So it is, it is precious. It is gold. And... Um, so its price is a price of a gold piece. So yes, if we sell, if we sold, we sold some pieces, but not. Um, I think we expected to sell more, but the situation in the in Lebanon especially didn't help us because my uh, friends, family, audience, and Lux and Gems, the brand that I collaborated with the main audience is located in Lebanon. And with this, uh, yeah, with the economic situation, like saying uh, amount in uh, dollars, they, they, they will get a heart attack. So we, we didn't yeah. expect, <laughs> right. we didn't expect a lot of our friends and family to be able to buy this product. But mm -hmm. we got, we sold, uh, we sold most of the products we manufactured, actually. We just have a, mm -hmm. a few from what we manufactured. So we're happy mm -hmm. with the result. Uh, but we also, more than the people that uh, uh, bought the product, we, ha we had really good feedback. Like a lot of people reached out to say that they love this little product, that they find it cute, they find it uh, original. Uh, yeah, they like the idea of it. And for me as a designer, this was really important more than selling it, like the feedback and the, I, the yeah, what people think about it. Yeah, was was important for me as, yeah, for the concept of it. Of course, because it would give you uh, a little sense of reassurance that what you have designed uh, meets people's expectations. Yeah. However, when you're comparing the product that you're selling, because you're selling it, um, uh, it comes from a personal entity rather than a bigger entity. And joining back to the first idea that we've discussed, do you still feel that people today have the, uh, would feel more reassured uh, buying the same product, maybe like an 18 carat with the same uh, weight from a brand or a location that they know traditionally than from a smaller designer uh, whom they don't. Exactly. This is in the head of everyone in jewelry, in fashion, in everything luxury related. People still have the idea of luxury means name, means brand doesn't mean quality of product. So yeah, even like a small startup or a small brand with um, really good um, uh, guidelines for quality and that caters uh, perfect finishing, perfect quality, perfect material can maybe sometimes present more valuable product than a big brand that makes the same product but in mass or more uh, you know with less care on the details mm, but mm, still mm, people in, have in, this in idea. an industry yeah that luxury yes, is yes, the name. exactly exactly i mean uh with previous uh discussions uh, on this uh uh, live with Ghalia chat uh, i've tried to attend to the importance of this issue because still most of us have the perception that 
if we're buying luxury, then we're buying it from like a global name. Uh, whether this is cultural or not, uh, it's I think a bigger issue to, to discuss. However, when we started the conversation, you said it yourself that uh, our cultures like in the Middle East and maybe a little bit in the Gulf region, we still look up to brands that are established and have their like physical locations on the market and who have are more renowned but your generation have started uh, or or is kicking off with smaller brands and is uh, focusing on this savoir uh, faire like the know-how the quality etc do you think that the future is bright for people like you for designers like you i I strongly feel this and now especially this time where everything is becoming virtual it enforces this idea and it even it's making the big brands think of a new perspective and to become more uh, virtual than uh, physical stores and the, the idea of like luxury the criteria for luxury that were present before are changing slowly and I think yeah for the new generation like designers like me even my colleagues in design no one is interested in establishing a brand the traditional way that brand exists right now like the, the vision of mm -hmm. brands or establishing themselves me and my other colleagues it's yes towards this a new way of uh, um, being reach, reach uh, being like possible to reach out through uh, the internet or uh, the virtual presence and not only that establishing a brand means uh, I will rent a store at the mall and I will uh, mm. you know, have this perfect boutique. Right. Yeah. Exactly, like the, the, the guidelines, the follow up on guidelines. <laughs> So now when it comes to like focusing again on your brand, do you believe that in the near future you will be uh, developing like a little one shot product or uh, you would think of developing like small capsule collections um, on a seasonal basis or a regular basis? Um, actually, I'm still now figuring out the path that this, the way I'm I will be developing my own products, but for sure I'm um, I'm for collaborating with other artists. I love doing this. I love working with someone and merging ideas. This is something I want mm -hmm. to focus on, and I um, I want to create uh, lines of uh, yeah capsule collections, as you said, and uh, I'm working on an item that will. Uh, be known as uh, my design that can be developed into many other designs but yeah now my focus is on being recognized for like putting my trademark in design doing this one item that will be known okay this is uh this is Naila Obeid's design Naila. yeah I will yeah, go buy yeah. Naila Obeid. like this one item that really uh puts you in a um distinguished uh, category yeah and uh, like building this and trademark and then slowly building up collections from this but I'm not looking now on uh, establishing collections and going big on the market because uh, yeah I think it's a step by step starting slowly and building step by step is what will make me grow yeah, so you're looking more at reasonable ways to uh, developing yeah. and uh, sure steps, little steps, yeah, not like, sure uh, steps. Uh, yeah, next item, uh, like adult, adult human. <laughs> adult. So I'm starting with a baby <laughs> and then, yeah, and then the parents, <laughs> the grandma. <laughs> uh, into... <laughs> <laughs> interesting i mean i mean at least you would capture the whole family into coming and buying that's a good that's a good thing that's a good thing Naila, it's really interesting to have really looked at uh your perspective and your point of view on 
developing a brand and not stressing uh, on just like following up traditional. Uh, we, we're using now, I think, more often the word traditional because what we have seen lately in retail, especially during the pandemic, has really changed our perspective and conception uh, uh, in business and how we want to deal with things. And as you said, it uh, social media has been doing you uh, justice. I mean, it is giving you visibility and you have been doing lots of effort on traveling uh, from different locations, uh, collaborating with different people uh, to put forward your design, your services uh, in the right quality uh, and in the right um, aspect that you wish to, to focus on or show. So what are, now, now uh, in terms of design, we know that your future plans are uh, looking at developing slowly uh, other little humans or grown, grown ups. <laughs> in terms of design, do you think that you would be also <laughs> um, pushing or focusing on finding freelance jobs with uh, companies who wish to engage with you to, to work on services, design services, etc.? Yeah. I everyone needs to have some financial stability and uh, being a freelancer is a constant uh, worry if you want because you don't know yeah. if uh, one um, if you'll have enough projects or if uh, you'll have a debt season you don't have like a regular income as a freelancer so yeah my always my goal is to build connections wherever I can to build uh, new um, links with the companies, with the independence in the field, because like really everyone can have like uh, can bring you opportunities you don't know they exist, and planting seeds everywhere is important because maybe one of them will give a tree or. Yeah, so my, uh, my, my philosophy now is to make the most connections I can, but without any uh, pressure. I'm like, I was in Dubai. I, uh, I followed up this collaboration I did with the Lux and Gems. And while being there, I started contacting, for example, my student that I taught uh, jewelry illustration. She hooked me up with her friend designer. I uh, visited their company, I made connections with them, I'm designing for them now. So wherever I'm, I'm going, wherever I, uh, I am present, I try to make those connections. And I love yeah. to have like clients all over the world. So I have now people in uh, Belgium I'm working with and I'm going to visit next month. And yeah, I love this lifestyle of um, being independent, working with many people. And I hope I can and carry on doing here. this. And it could yeah. be like yeah. enough. And I know that, like, especially in this world, you grow slowly. You can't, like, I remember also from your stories in class, how you started and how you grew. Like, I remember how you started in retail and you tell us these stories of how Oh, like how over uh, when the overflow you were with work and uh, yeah I see myself like I remember what you what were your experiences and I see myself in this position and I think yeah it's it's true it's step by step it's slow but I'll get there and when I forget that I'm young I think about my classmates who are 30 plus and who are just yeah. wanting to make it now in this field. And I think, okay, I have time. Why the rush? And yeah, um, yeah. yeah just keep making connections. Um, and uh, if you work hard, if you even, sometimes I started to design, I started to, design, start to uh, make pictures of projects just for myself without, uh, without having anyone I'm designing to, because I love doing this. And when people see you this yeah. passionate and motivated, they want to work with you. Right. Well, yeah, oh, Kiki. You have a little greeting from Mexico. Yeah, this is Kiki, <laughs> Kiki Bebe. 
this is uh, this is my uh, colleague in uh, he's a he's a jewelry designer too he has a silver uh, uh, manufacturing company in guadalajara in mexico and um, i would be happy to collaborate with him <laughs> I I really hope I I really hope that this happens soon. It's a beautiful um thing to look at and to attend to. I wish you uh, the best of luck Laila. Thank you for uh, all of these uh heartwarming words <laughs> uh and everything that you have shared. I mean uh <laughs> uh just like thinking about it really. I'm I'm happy that you 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 managed to uh do what you like to do and to do it well and uh, that things are working well for you and I hope that the future will be even brighter uh, thank you for really because now when I when I had to talk about my life about my past I was conscious about it because I've never went a step back and just looked at my past like how it went I was in it and now looking back I feel grateful and it was really good to have this uh, to make me think about okay well i was there i'm here now because sometimes you get you forget when you are in a situation that yeah i was somewhere else and now i'm here and uh, there are things to be grateful for and there are things to be looking forward to sometimes you get stuck it's uh, normal especially in this time So, it's good that you, you, you are having me. this this perspective. <laughs> thank uh, you, Naila. I I think I don't know if there is anything else that we should have talked about and we didn't. But uh, like uh, I I was just thinking of our previous conversations, and I believe we managed to highlight uh, both aspects uh, that you are specializing in. If you have anything else that you need to. Uh, tell us about or share please uh, don't hesitate <laughs> i just want to say to everyone thinking about going into the luxury world that it's not something inaccessible it's not like this world of uh, shining uh, sparkles that is very far away from it's not something uh, like abstract it's inaccessible or yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, for everyone and uh, if you love it you you can make it, do it and you just have to be passionate and uh, it's never too late whatever age really this this thing is uh, <laughs> right. very important <laughs> yeah so thank you thank so, you so so it's it's thank you naila um really you got me back <laughs> quite <Nostalgia. sometimes. laughs> yeah. so yeah really and uh, i'm happy that uh, we managed to do this uh, discussion and hopefully uh, in the near future we will be uh, doing back uh, a, a, another another live maybe and uh, hopefully if you would have developed more items or maybe different collections or collabs that you would like to put forward we would love to also uh, to share them with everyone and to to talk about them thank you so much naila <laughs> of course I'm looking forward to seeing you again in real life after all these Hopefully, years. Hopefully me too. <laughs> Hopefully me too, me too. Maybe uh back home or somewhere in the world. Yeah, maybe in Paris <laughs> soon. <laughs> yes, okay. I'm looking forward to Naila. Yeah, thank okay. you so much for this conversation. <laughs> And thank you everyone for joining in and those who joined a little bit later uh I will be posting this live on IGTV and later on on YouTube and don't hesitate to uh, get in touch personally with Naila on her personal account or portfolio account uh if you need like design services or to get a happy human to make you happy right <laughs> Yeah it does PS it does make you happy believe me it does make you <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much naila and i wish you a nice evening and uh good nice. evening for everyone happy weekend <laughs> yeah. bye bye you too <laughs> bye bye